Hallelujah. 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 Standing right in the need of prayer right now. Hallelujah. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Lift hands and bless God. If you hear us, you have an answer. You need to pray now. Hallelujah. And we have an answer. Thank you, God. And we thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you, thank you that we can enter in and worship you. Thank you, God. Thank you. We trust you for all things, God. You hear us when we pray. You're the keeper of our soul. Thank you. If you hear us, you have an answer. Meet needs. And we have an answer, Jesus. And we thank you. Amen. We thank you that we can enter in and worship you and praise you. Phone devices. If you use it, we trust you for all things. We should only be using it to find you. You're the keeper of our soul today. Bless your people today. Everybody repeating after me. This is my meet needs. Jesus. Everybody with your Bibles in your hand or your phone device. And if you're using your phone, you should only be using it to find your word. Amen. Amen. Everybody repeating after me. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. This book calls me an overcomer. And that's who I am. Today I shall be taught the infallible, unchanging, Word of God. So my mind is alert. My heart is receptive as I gladly receive the Word today. I believe that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. Amen. Holy Spirit, take us to where we need to be. Be our guide today. Minister to hearts today. We we again rebuke anything that's not like you today and declare your glory in this place in Jesus name we want to talk from the subject Jesus always keeps his promise he always keeps his promise he always keeps his promise If you will, we're going to stay in, in, in Luke predominantly. This is our text for this, this entire message. And, and if you will go to Luke 24, 36 to 43. Luke 24, 36 to 43. Jesus is showing himself to some more of the disciples. So after he got up on resurrection uh, earlier that day, he didn't run to get back home. As if they had run him out of town. They didn't run him out of town. And, 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 and he had some more teaching to do. He had to lay some more foundational things with him. And he had to prove to them, the disciples, and many other disciples, the 11 that remain, and, and other disciples that were a part of his ministry, that, that he keeps his promises. Amen. 
The fact that he was up and showing himself to people said, I keep my promise. Amen. And so starting from that, that, that framework, uh, Luke 24, 36 to 43 says, Now as they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were terrified and frightened. In other words, they were scared. And supposed they had seen a spirit. And he said to them, why are you troubled? And why do you, why do you doubt? Why does doubt arise in your heart? Behold my hands and my feet. That is it. That it is I myself. Handle me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see I have. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. But while they still did not believe for joy. But while they still did not believe for joy. I'm going to get to that, but I wanted you to underline that, highlight it in your note. They didn't believe for joy. They didn't believe. And marveled. He said, he said to them, he, because they didn't believe, he said, I'm going to show you this body works like a, a body. He said, have you any food? Here. So they gave him a piece of broiled fish and some honeycomb, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Your resurrection body gets hungry too. There was no use lifting his body up out the grave if it wasn't going to be a workable body. You don't need to lift a spirit about the grave. Let's start at the top and work down. Piece by piece. And it's called exegetical. As they said these things, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them. This seems to be the same late Sunday meeting Jesus had with the 11 described in John 20, 19 through 25. That's just a reference. John 20, 19 to 20. In his gospel, John specifically wrote that Jesus appeared to them when the doors were shut and locked. The guys were in hiding. So they were in a closed room, but Jesus still got in. That's, that should make some people scared and other people happy. That nothing can lock him out of your situation. And doors don't stop him. See, a door can't stop him because that's who he is. I'm a door. And I handle all the other doors. So when he shows up, all the other doors say, just come on in. Who is the king of glory? The, the, the Lord. Strong and might. He is the king. And then the scripture said, lift up your heads, O ye gates, you doors, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory. So when, when he show up, every door just fly open. That's why you need Jesus in your life. Because he causes the doors to fly open. But he also shuts some while he opens others. Okay. <laughs> so they were in hiding. And he said, why are you troubled? Well, today we would say, what's wrong with y'all? Why are you troubled? 
Why you trouble? You trouble as if I never told you I would do this. I keep my promise. People make promises and they don't keep them. We miss it. But he keeps his promise. And so he's showing up after the resurrection to say, I'm a promise keeper. I kept it when I said I was going to the cross. I kept it when I said three days later I'm getting up out of the grave. And I'm keeping it because I'm going to show you who I am. He's a promise keeper. And you can trust in that. That if he makes you a promise, he's going to keep his word to you. Y'all out there? I mean, you're glad about that. But let's, let's move on. In this same passage, he says, peace to you. Peace to you. These were words with new meaning. Now that Jesus had risen from the dead. Peace in the Greek is the word irene. Irene. If you want to spell it phonetically, I-R-A-Y hyphen. And then, not shene, but ne. N-A-Y. I, Rene. When Jesus said peace to you, his new meaning of it was that you are set at one with God again. See, when he said peace to him before, it was in a different time frame for him. It was in a different Uh, disposition but now after the resurrection he's saying because of what I did this morning and this past Friday peace to you (laughs) so he changed their definition of peace Because a new realm of activity and new revelation had showed up. And that is, the peace that I'm talking about is not like anything you've ever had before. But then the prophet had already told you about me and said he would be called the prince. Jesus keeps his word. So you are set at one with God again. Everybody say again. Again. So what you didn't have before he did Calvary, before he went to the grave, before he got up, you have afterward. Again. You got it. The same word for peace also means prosperity in the Greek. Once you are set at one with God through Jesus Christ, you are in line to be prosperous. Are you out there? But you know why? Because you've been set in the kingdom of God. So the kingdom of God is about prosperity. And I know you don't like prosperity preachers. Well, hate them after you get your 50 million dollars. As long as you're living from check to check and you got more weak than check. (laughs) Listen to somebody talking about prosperity. Because faith comes by hearing. This is the kingdom of God prosperity. It makes heavenly or supernatural resources available to you due to Due to, it makes it available to you due to a mended relationship. You're back in the house. (laughs) So once you come back home, that's when you get a new ring and a new coat. You're back in the house. Does that make sense? So you have everything that's in the house. My kids don't ask me, even grown and having their own places and paying rent at their own joints. They... They come to my house and they don't ask me. Can I go into the refrigerator? They don't ask me if that stuff in there belongs to anybody. They just start 
munching. And say, this sure is good. I said, well, I did like it yesterday. <laughs> Any parents in here know what I'm talking about? Just, just act like I got a witness or two. Don't look at your parents. Don't make no eyes at them. Leave them alone. We even have some, they'll come and borrow clothes. Okay, I started picking, didn't I? Let's pick it. Jesus was a peacemaker and a peace giver. And by this sign, the disciples were able to discern their leader because he always came speaking peace. Then he said, behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. I'm not a ghost, it's me. Come on, come on, come on. And, and we are a culture of people. We're, we're really scared of ghosts. You're not the people in the, in, in the movies that when you hear a noise, you go searching it out. Not this culture of people. No, no, y'all not these people. You go the other direction. And if you're careful, if you're with somebody, you tap them and say, what was that? And that's the husband talking to the wife. What was that? <laughs> Whoa. You hear something fall, you wait. I'm going to see if something's going to happen again. <laughs> Before I figure out which way to go. You know, I know y'all watch all that movie. They go searching out everything. <laughs> Not I'm not going to say you people because that's not good. <laughs> not you. In this, Jesus establishes both his identity and his bodily existence. In a transformed state. It was the same body he had before the cross. The same body he had on the cross. And the same body in the tomb. Now some of you think you're going to run off and leave this body you got. You're only going to be separated a little while. But you're going to get your body back. <laughs> and when it comes back, you're going to say, Oh, I'm so sure glad to see you, body. <laughs> you look so much better than you did when I laid you down. It won't have any cancer in it, and it won't have any disease. <laughs> it won't be asthmatic or bronchitis. It won't no blood pressure, no, no, no cardiac problems. You are a better body. <laughs> are y'all out there? The resurrected body of Jesus retained the wounds he received in his suffering. And I kept saying, why didn't he just get rid of them? Because Jesus had to prove that he keeps his promises. And he had to give people, see, he kept them for several reasons. Here are some of the reasons. He kept the wound in his hands, the wound in his side, the wounds in his feet. He kept them for a reason. Because some people don't believe. And, 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 and he told them, take your hand and put it inside of it. Touch it. It's really a hole, a nail was there. See? And even with that, you can believe, you can be an unbeliever with joy. I'm going to talk about that. I got to get down to that. Here's, here's number one reason. To exhibit the wounds to the disciples so they would know that it was the very same Jesus. Not another one. To be his ornament, his trophies of his great work for us. I did this for you. To memorialize the weapons with which he defeated death. I used all of this. My body, these wounds. Because even though you wounded me, he would become a wounded healer. Yeah. Yeah. 
I got to stop there. Because some of you can't work because you're sick. Jesus doesn't believe that. He said, through your pain, you can help get somebody delivered. I know counseling tells us you can't help nobody till you help yourself. I think that's the best time to help somebody when you're going through. Be a wounded healer. No, that's not good. This is not good. All my stuff not together, but but this is you can make it. You can do anybody ever been hurt and start telling people you can make it? You start ministering to them and talking to them. You you they broke and you broke too, and you share what little you got with them. So, Say you just two broke people, you know, but but you trying to help them out whatever way you can. Come on, I don't have no money, but come on, I know where to get some free food. I know where something is. Come on, are, are y'all out there with me? Not er- not everybody like that. To serve as advocates in His perpetual intercession for us. There's a few things that Jesus goes back to God and shows him on our behalf. We always hear about the blood, but I believe when he goes back, he carries that body back to heaven and say, you know, you know, I did this too. I did this too. I did this too. All of this was done. Plus this blood too. I gave my body for them, my life and my blood for them. Are y'all out there? And as we study this passage, I find that every now and then Jesus would just, he would just leave. He, he, He would just take off and go to heaven and come back. Because his body was good on earth and in. That's a good body. That's why I keep telling you all, stop telling people that when they die, they got their wings. No, they didn't. If you you tell people that they're going to become an angel when they die, you're telling them that they weren't redeemed. Because there is no redemption for angels. When they cut up, they get thrown out all the way. God didn't send Jesus after devil when he fell. But he came after us. But he's coming after the devil because he came after us. <laughs> Are you listening? Does that make sense? So don't tell them they got wink because you tell them you going to hell. That could be your sign that you're telling somebody they're going to hell. You they got their wings. You shady as you can be. You, you, they got their wings. <laughs> they, they got their wings. Now, now, y'all just crazy enough to do that. Y'all, I'll be sitting somewhere and somebody uh, send a text across the room. Wings, wings, wings. <laughs> are, are y'all there? Does this make sense to anybody? Tell them you're going to be caught up. That's when you start shouting. Don't give them no wings. Don't even sing it at my funeral. Two wings to cover my face. Two wings. No, don't sing. Don't, don't bring a wing nowhere by. You can bring a turkey, a chicken wing to dinner afterward. But, just, but, but, but no wings other than that, you know. Verse 39 says, handle me and see. Jesus wants to assure them that he was real. Handle me. Handle me. Put your hands on me. Then he goes on to say, a spirit does not have flesh and blood, bones. Notice he didn't mention blood because you can't handle blood, but you can handle bones and body and flesh. And then verse 41, this, this verse messed with me. It said, They still did not believe for joy and marveled. You think that because you're rejoicing over something that you're in belief. But you can be happy in something and still not believe it. 
That's what he said about them as they were dealing with Jesus. They would say, hey, Jesus, hey, Jesus. Whoa. That's why he had to do things like handle me. A spirit doesn't have bones and flesh. Touch me. Feel me. Are y'all there? In that moment when they touched his hands and feet, their joy kept them from faith. This may have been true in the sense that we may believe something to be, to, to be too good to be true. It's the place of a lack of faith. If you don't believe God can do it, and when he does something miraculous, you say, this is too good to be true. And the world wants to keep giving you the false stuff so you won't believe the legitimate when it shows up. And, and, and when the legitimate shows up, you, you align it with the world stuff and you say, this is too good to be true. Where well, everything is not a scam. Some things are legitimately from God. Do you know a real miracle when it shows up? Do you know a real blessing when it shows up? Because it has God's handprint on it. And it don't come in with the same headache. But blessings do come in with work. Oh. You want to be rich when you get the money, you're going to work. You want a new job, you're going to have to work. You want a new house, you're going to have to cut grass, pay the gas light, phone, pull weeds. You came out, I want a home, I want a home. Go to Home Depot and say, I want a lawnmower, I want... Unless you get to that level, you got enough, you can call somebody, blow it for me, and rake it for me. Are are y'all here? Do you understand what I'm saying? Too good to be true. Yet it is also true that God wants from us a reasoned, thought out faith. Not giddy and easy, easy believism. That's really not believing. Yeah, I'm good with that. But you don't believe. Jesus wanted them to think and believe. Then a great joy like a tide swept over them. And they they could not believe they were so glad. Not long ago, just the opposite happened. Christ was praying in the garden of Gethsemane and and stuff was going on and and, and, and they fell asleep for sorrow. So, So you can be in unbelief in sorrow and you can be in unbelief in joy. You're gonna get that. I, I know that's too deep of a concept. That's, that's crazy. That's somewhere else. You can get so sad, you just, you, you, you're just upset and just gone off to sleep. Some of y'all just in the bed already. But I, <laughs> Let me cite some examples where joy hindered faith. Just to make the point about that point I just made. In the sense of something being too good to be true. In Genesis 45, 25 through, through 26. Did you put it up? Or is, it's behind me? Okay. Oh, it's in front of me too. <laughs> oh. Then they went up out of Egypt and came to the land of Canaan to Jacob, their father. 
Next verse. And they told him, saying, Joseph is still alive. And he is governor over all the land of Egypt. And Jacob's heart stood still because he did not it was too good to be true. <laughs> Even though some his sons were telling him that his son, his baby son, was alive. Tell him that Joseph was alive. And they went back to Je and Jacob. No, no. He, he, he can't be. He can't be. He couldn't believe it. Next one. Job 9, 16. And, it said, and this is Job. Now you prayed for God to hear you. You prayed for God to answer your prayer. And then he says, if I called and he answered me, I would not believe that he was listening to my voice. <laughs> Do you all see that? I called. He answered. Come on, say that with me. He answered. Come on. Do you see how quickly unbelief slips in? It's a lack of faith. I would not believe that he was listening. That would make sense if the second part of the phrase didn't say, he answered me. That means you had to discern that you said something to God and God said something back. Yes. Next one. Y'all don't believe yet either. <laughs> Psalm 126 and 1. It said, and this is when the children of Israel were in captivity. And when God delivered them and brought them back as they were walking back. When the Lord brought back the captivity of Zion is another name for the house of Israel, the children of Israel. We were like those who dream. We having a dream. This is not even real. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Listen here, just a baby. You're all right. We were like those who dream. You're walking back out of captivity and you still think, oh, this is a dream. You're coming out of debt. This is a dream. You're coming out of something. This is a dream. You're coming out of a bad situation. This ain't real. This is a dream. Uh, would you believe that God is doing something for you right now, this very moment, this very time? Can you just take it for what it is? That he's not trying to spook you. He's not trying to scare you. He's not trying to fool you. It is what it is. And what he's doing, he's doing it right now. When you call him, he answers you. When I call him, he don't answer Carolyn for me. When Carolyn calls him, he answers Carolyn. Come on, come on. When Rose calls him, who does he answer, Rose? Come on, come on, somebody. Are y'all out there? You stop having dreams. You really having a nightmare. Stop having them dreams. Whew. My God. Let me give you one last one. I think you're almost ready to believe. Acts 12, 13 through 14. When Peter was set free from, from prison. He was free from prison. He was free from prison. Somebody knocking at the door. As, come on. And as Peter did what? Of the gate, a girl named Rhoda came to answer. Not the people, the men. A, a, a child. When they said, girl, she's younger. You know, kids knows it. They... <laughs> Who is that? <laughs> 
There was Rhoda at the door. When she recognized Peter's voice because of her gladness, she did not open the door, open the gate, but ran in and announced that Peter stood before the gate. Stop right there. She got excited. That's Peter, y'all, and left him outside. <laughs> That's what kids do. Or oh, confuse the dog. That's Peter. No. <laughs> Next one. But they said to her, you are beside yourself. Sorry about that, Josh. I didn't get that to you. I'm, I, I know I didn't, but I know you're able to take care of business. <laughs> and we're going to use you till August. <laughs> but they said to her, you are beside yourself. Yet she kept insisting that it was so. So they said, it is his angel. I wish I had a real little person. You are grown man having a conversation with a kid. Peter at the door. No, we're not. You, you beside yourself. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what they said. And you know, kids, when you when you don't believe them, how many know when you don't believe what kids are saying, they get real upset with you, yeah. Yeah. and they'll start snatching on your stuff. Wake up, boy! <laughs> it is him. It is him. You beside yourself. No, I'm not. It is him. And so when you don't believe that God is able to do something, you rationalize that it's something else. Now, now you can be praying for something to happen, and when it happens, you don't even believe it. Oh, don't act like y'all good with that. Y'all can pray for it. And when it show up, you rebuke it. That's the devil. That's what y'all were doing, praying for him to get free. There are times when joy can hinder faith. It's possible to be a joy-filled unbeliever. Well, that's rough. And then Jesus said, let me help you. Have you any food? Have you any, bring me some need. Let's, let's move on, and I'm, and, and I'm almost done. Y'all tired of this. Luke 24, 44, and 48, and it reads, Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. In, in my other presentation, while I was with you in that earlier presentation, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding. And, and here is the, the Lucille Trammer uh, 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 definition of open their understanding. He peeled back darkness and shined in light. That they might comprehend the scripture. Then he said to them, thus it is written. He said that to them because where it was written, you good Jewish boys and girls, you read it. And thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. You are witnesses of not only what was written, but what I said. You are witnesses of what I said. 
And I said it in my body before Calvary. You witnesses. Are y'all getting anything yet? These are the words I spoke to you while I was still with you. So who is this talking to us now, Jesus? You're still with us. But to understand, when I was in that demonstration, pre-salvation, pre-debt paid, pre-mended relationship, when I was with you before, Now I'm on the other side saying, peace be unto you. In other words, the relationship is mended and I've done what I promised to do. You are witnesses of these things. Turn to somebody and say, you're a witness. You know why you're a witness? Because you heard me say it today. You heard me preach it today. You heard me read it today. You're a witness. And if God ever asked you, did you hear it? You can't say, I didn't hear. You might not remember the day or the hour. But I believe if you are in even Alzheimer's, he'll carry you back to the place when you did remember. We are witnesses. We are witnesses. And then moving on to the end, uh, uh, Luke 24, 49 through 53, he says, he said, based on what you know, I'm not a ghost. I'm up. I'm on the move. Now it's time for you all to activate what you've been a witness of. You need to activate it. Get busy in it. He said, behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem. Let me stop right there, and I'm, I'm going to get back. Remind me of where I stopped. Uh, 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 go back. See, when Jesus was talking to them at first, he was in the upper room with them. That later on, they keep going back to that same room. A lot happened in that upper room. And, and, and in the process, he was talking and teaching, but Jesus was on the journey with him. He was walking. And, 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 and other references said he was, he, was, he was in Bethany when he got finished with the conversation. See, Jesus is trying to walk you somewhere while he gives you information along the way. He, he, he was walking. With, we don't have time to stand still for this teaching. I don't have time to stand still and reteach you again. It's time for you to get moving. Time for you to start walking this stuff out. So I'm going to talk and walk with you. I'm not going to sit down and teach you like I did before. On the rock or by the shore or in the boat. We're going to walk this thing out. And when he got so far down, he said, And led them out as far as Bethany. But, 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 but this is what he said. Let me read the whole thing. Behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you are endued with power from on high. And he led them out as far as Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. Now it came to pass. It happened. Everybody say it happened. Yeah. While he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into heaven. He said, I need a break from y'all. I need some daddy time. And every so often on this journey, you need to escape and have some daddy time. You can't walk it out the same way all the time. You need some daddy time. And they worshipped him. And what did they do? They didn't keep going to Bethany like that crew didn't keep going to Emmaus. They turned and went back to Jerusalem because they had to get power. Now all they had was breathed on Holy Spirit. But go wait till you've been filled. 
and then you won't need my body around you. Because you'll have me in the Holy Ghost. And that's when he said, go, baptize, teach, compel them, tell them I'm the way. Blessing to you today. But you are witnesses of his goodness. You are witnesses of his grace. Blessings to you today. He keeps his promises. Turn to somebody and say, hang on, he keeps his promises. Turn to somebody else, tell him, hang on, he keeps his promises. What he says he will do. Give God a good praise in this house. Hallelujah. <laughs> There's an old hymn that says this. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation. Purchase of God. Born of his spirit. Washed in his blood. Perfect submission. All is at rest. I in my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting. Looking above. Filled with his goodness. I rest in his love. So this is my story. <laughs> this is my song. Praising my Savior. All the day long. Blessings to you today. This is my song. Praise my Savior. Oh, Lord, I, I have a story. I have a song. Praising my Savior. Give him a good praise in this house today. Come on, you can do better than that. He's worthy. Come on, you can do better than that. He's worthy. <laughs> How many of you have a story today? Lift them hands up and say, I have a story and I've got a story. surrendered your life to the Lord Jesus Christ is available to you today give him your heart give him your life if you're in this room and you're not filled with the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues it is available to you right now 
If you need to be restored back to the body of Christ, just pastor, I was in one time. I'm not in now. God loves you right where you are. Come home. Come back. He loves you just where you are. But he knows he has better.